As you can see, we're training at the stadium today, so before we go down and grab a few of the boys as they come off the pitch, let's take a look at the video that inspired this week's sillies. I'd rather him than me. That did not look too pleasant, but Big Ben struck again, so let's head down and play in your face. So, in your face, where the aim of the game is to strike the mannequin in its imaginary face and at pace, thanks to our speaker. <laughs> Missed it. 62 miles an hour. Can someone else go like a stretch? <laughs> I'll go in the back, so someone else go first. Oh, that's no chance was that more than mine. Oh, Maka. Strike. <laughs> <laughs> It's That's the one. Sixty-one. Oh. Oh. How's that sixty-four? Dip on that. <laughs> yeah, you replace it. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I'll go on. You. Strike. 75. Well done. You beat it. You're going a mile an hour faster Oh, wow. Did you get that? Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed one bad one. Oh, there we go. And he hit the mannequin down as well. But would you be able to save a shot at 75? That's the passion. Standard. He catches them. Blackpool arrive in Cardiff, now 16 matches without a win, dating back to a January 1-0 victory over Brighton at Bloomfield Road. In fact, Blackpool have won just four times all season, all at home and all to the tune of one goal to nil, with Birmingham and Millwall joining ourselves and the aforementioned Seagulls on that particular list. On the road, the Tangerines have picked up just seven draws and seven points all season and have lost their last two matches on their travels, 3-2 and 4-0 against playoff candidates Ipswich Town and Derby County respectively. In fact, if Blackpool were able to record their first away win of the season on Saturday, it would also mark the first time in 20 years that the club have been able to record a league double over the Bluebirds. That's a feat that they achieved for two years running, back in the 93-94 and 94-95 seasons. Unsurprisingly, Blackpool ranked dead last in terms of goals scored and goals conceded, and have failed to score on 18 separate occasions this season, a mark only beaten by fellow strugglers Wigan, who have been blanked 19 times. The club's individual scoring chart is led by Stephen Davis with five, yet he's been on loan at Sheffield United since last month, leaving a three-way tie of Gary Medine, Nathan Delfonso and Andrea Orlandi, all with three goals to their name. Just in case you didn't know, Peter Whittingham was recently included in the Football League Championship Team of the Decade. Now he sat right here and joined Mark to discuss his favourite Bluebirds team over his time here at Cardiff City. Now there were stipulations to this, we knew Wits wouldn't pick himself, so we made sure he was included, along with Cardiff City's other two longest serving players to date, Aaron Gunnison and David Marshall. So there were eight places up for grabs, we went all the way back to Wits' first season at Ninian Park 2006-07. Let's see who he picked. From that year, probably Roger Johnson. He was, um, he was a vocal guy, a leader. Really wanted to win games. Any time I really took a corner or a free kick, you always knew he was going to be in and around it. And as a centre half, if you, if you can get goals as well, it, it's a massive bonus for the team. Cup final, yeah. Who are you going to go with from 07 08? I'm going to go with McPhail, I think. 
the ability that, that Maka had was, was scary. He just he used to keep the ball for as long as he wanted the ball and his range of passing and his, everything about his game was, was pretty awesome. And then with it as well, he was just such a nice guy. He'd do anything for you and it was, it was a case of no issue with anything that you asked him to do and he was, he was a brilliant guy and someone I still speak to now. Following year, last year at Ninian Park? Probably Ross McCormack. When he first came in, he was um, no one really knew what, what to expect. But when he came in, he's finishing and his and his skills on the ball. He was he was a pleasure to watch at times in training and in games. He just seemed to hit the ground running as soon as he came in. He was he, he knew what he wanted. He knew that he wanted to score goals and he knew what he wanted to do well for the team. And he was a great player to play with because he always wanted the ball. 2009-10, Dave Jones brought in a lot of players that summer. The name probably stands out there is Paul Quinn. I think he was really unlucky here. He, he, was, he was a really good defender. You didn't really see anyone get past him or take him on or anything. And as, as, as a leader as well, he, he was brilliant. He's probably not got the, the breaks he deserves, but as a, as a guy and as a player, I'd, I'd, I'd probably pick Paul Quinn. Next up, 2010-11, Steve Jones last year at the club. Yeah, I think, I think he's, it's between Jay and Chops, obviously. I think Jay got his England call up there which is rightly deserved. He, he, he was brilliant that year. He was scoring all sorts of goals, tappings, long range shots, headers, everything. And, and he fully deserved his England call up. But the scary thing about Chops was that any big game, he seemed to score or do something. It was, it was pretty surreal. He, he spoke about it a few times, like, oh, it's a big game this weekend, I'll score. And everyone was like, yeah, I like Chops, stuff like that. But it happened. I mean, even in the like, playoff finals and stuff like that, he, he, was always, he was always in and around something. And he was always going to create chances and score goals. I think anyone from any time I've been here, if I wanted a chance to fall to anyone, it was chopped. So I'm going to go with chopped. 2011-12, playoffs again against the odds this time. That year I'd probably go with Kevin McNaughton. I think I could have picked him any year for the past 20. But again, another great guy to have around. and Everyone knows about Kev. He gave everything to, to games. He put everything into it. And the fans were here, obviously really took to him as well. So it was um, he was a good guy to have around. And I think the amount of games he played and the consistency he played at, you'd have to pick Kev. Promotion year, 12-13, hardest pick, probably. The standout performer probably for that year would be Huds. Ridiculous that year, to be fair. He seemed to win every header and obviously chipped in with his fair, fair few goals as well, which, which is good for a centre-half. But the way he marshaled the troops and, and he organised stuff, and that, that's the reason we had so many clean sheets, in, in my opinion. He was, um, he was great for us. Last season, Premier League difficulties, of course, didn't end those. We wanted it to. I'm looking at midfielder or a striker. It's up to you. I'd probably go with Bellas. It has to be really from his from his career as a whole and, and, and what he's done in the game. It, it can only really be Bellas. He was when he first came in. He, he looked so sharp. He, he was he was great for the lads. He'd obviously get onto a few of the boys if they weren't doing it. But it's, it's good in training. You need people to be onto you and to get the best out of you. And Bellas definitely did that. Pretty good team from what I'm looking at there. It's worked out, I think it's a 4-3-3 or 4-4-2. It depends if you're playing Bellas in a midfield or attack, but either way, it looks pretty strong to me. Yeah, I'm not sure how many headers will win up front, but it'd be, um, it's obviously it's a great team and, and some great players and some great guys in there which I've thoroughly enjoyed playing with. It's been another busy week at the club. Let's have a look what's been going on. Craig Noon joined S4C at the Cardiff City Stadium this week and played a big part in the documentary series A Deal Not Mouth as he surprised one of our girls' soccer school stars and season ticket holders, Adwen, with a kickabout and tour around the stadium as part of a special day. 18-year-old goalkeeper Luke O'Reilly committed to the Bluebirds earlier this week as he signed a one-year professional deal with the club. Luke will link up with our development squad for the remainder of the pre-season and heading into the summer. As well as wits, John Tobert was also nominated by Cardiff City for the Club Hero Award for the 10th Annual Football League Awards on Sunday evening for his dedication and commitment to the club over the years. In partnership with the Principality Building Society, Cardiff City's Community Foundation have launched Active Afternoons which take place every Wednesday at the House of Sport 2 for just £3 per session from 1.30pm till 3.30pm. To register for the fun activities and five-a-side football, email ashley.thomas at cardiffcityfc.org.uk. Our Cardiff City women's side were the first to take on Swansea City on Sunday afternoon as they came runners-up in the FAW Women's Cup after falling to a 4-2 defeat against Swansea City ladies. The next in league action on Sunday afternoon as they travel away to take on Wrexham ladies. Highlights of all the action are available to view on YouTube and Cardiff City Player Now. 
The development side also met Swansea City this week as they visited the Cardiff City Stadium on Monday evening. The Bluebirds fell to a 1-0 defeat against our South Wales rivals but hope to bounce back on Monday as they take on Ipswich Town in their final game of the season at home, 7pm kickoff. And although the league is over for them, the academy still have an all-important FAW Youth Cup final left to play for. The young Bluebirds also take on their Swansea City rivals at the Cardiff City Stadium on Thursday the 30th of April, 7pm kickoff. David Marshall's club sponsors paid a visit to our home ground during the week and had Marshall behind the camera showcasing the new Uhl Sports products for the 2015-16 season. And if you'd like to get your hands on a pair of gloves signed by David Marshall himself, all you have to do is answer the following question. In which year did a young Marshy and his Celtic side knock Spanish giants Barcelona out of the UEFA Cup after holding them to a nil-nil draw at the Nou Camp? If you know the answer, all you have to do is tweet us at Cardiff City FC using the hashtag Marshy Miracles. Good luck.